Champion. Oh, Burger Crunch. Swipes. This is Viewer Takeover. We film every Monday night and bring it to YouTube every Tuesday. Hopefully Tuesday. I think I got my schedule all lined up uh, right here on PSVR Without Pearl. My name is Brian Paul and the guys to my right, the boys, Dave from Dave Station of VR. Oh, hello. I hope everybody's having a good week so far uh, whenever you see this. And I hope you're out there playing Squadrons because I want to play with some of y'all as soon as possible. And that guy on the far right hand side of the screen is AJ from The Underground. PSVR Underground. Brian, I'm so mad. You don't because, sound mad. Yeah, you sound well, really, actually. Really you got a grin mad. on your face. It's, it's like you're me. so glib about what you're about to it's say. It's hard for me wait. to be mad. Yeah. But, you know, I'm I've had really mad, a, a PSTV, this little thing, since, oh, it, yeah. since it came out. Uh, at, at, like, what, I don't even remember when. It's like a hundred and something bucks. I think it was like a hundred bucks. And last night, Brian informs me that it can play PS Vita games. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea. Ooh. I can't so figure I out why you bought one otherwise. <laughs> I don't know, man. To complete waste of money, and now it's almost a little too late, but I still want to, if I ever get a chance, uh, go back and visit some uh, some Vita games that I missed out on. Boy, do I have I'm some recommendations three. for you, my friend. Yeah. Yes. Every week on Viewer Takeover, we like to thank a whole lot of people. And the first person we want to thank, Johnny No Pockets, who that game cat, for that awesome Viewer Takeover introduction. Uh, man, he said it was a little who long. That? And I was like... I was like, man, just it's perfect. Just leave it as is. It's it spooky as hell. I loved it. The The level of thought that went into it was great. Uh, and I think you don't even have to say welcome to Viewer Takeover, apparently, if you send us a video, because that worked without it. So definitely, uh, definitely one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite intros I've ever seen, for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. I love Very the Phantom the of the Opera. The goblin yes. in the back clutching the PSVR mega box is great. Yes. The mega pack. Uh, Johnny okay. No Pockets, aka Who Dat Game Cat, uh, Who said it's his said it's his first uh, first October spending it with us as a game cat, and so he wanted to to do something, and and we thank you so much for it. We're bringing in October together. Uh, if you want to introduce next week's viewer takeover, make sure you send your <laughs> short or I guess uh, sweet, <laughs> seductive, <Yeah>. maybe <laughs> southern, somewhat spooky introductions without pearl at gmail dot com. Uh, but of course, Johnny No Pockets, aka Hudak Game Cat, uh, is not the only person we want to thank. We also want to thank whoosh, these people. These people down here are the fluffiest of the fluffy, the prettiest of the pretty, the most adorable of the adorable. These are people who went to patreon.com slash without parole games. And they're giving us a dollar or more every month. I kid you not, these are the people who are keeping the channel running. We appreciate your donations. We appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you very much for that. Consider going to patreon.com slash without parole games if you love us almost as much as we love you. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Before we dive into some of the name changes we got this week, I think we need yeah. to show a clip of the week. Here it is. Oh, here. What do we got? What do we got? AJ, do you know anything about this? Uh, is that, uh, you know, it's shit's making noise over there. I don't want to go over there. Yeah, you look away and you look back. And that's how the statues get you. Uh. <laughs> you guys didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. <laughs> what the fuck? What was that, man? Oh, no, 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 no. It's the only game that gets me, and I think I figured out what it is. I think it's the sound design. I, I've told you guys I'm very sensitive to like sound in games and music really matters and and stuff. And yeah, man. I mean, let's be honest. That thing just jumped out at my face when I'm talking to somebody in the chat and and like you know just having a conversation with the cats and just didn't expect it. And uh, yeah, that was uh, one of the more high pitched screams <laughs> I've ever done in my life. Not proud of it, but I have a blast playing Dread Hell as always, man. Excellent. Uh, moving right along. I, I love that clip, man. I love that so much. I love watching you play Dread Halls. It, it makes me want to play Dread Halls when I watch you play Dread Halls. We got some people that we need to thank. Other than all the other people we want to thank, don't we, AJ? 
We would like to thank those who support us by changing their name to something GameCat, something GameCat related, something GameCat adjacent, as you and something GameCat adjacent would like to say. And they can always let us know by leaving a hashtag GameCat in a comment to, to make it easier for us to search. And this week, we have five new GameCats to welcome to the GameCat Dojo. Wow. Starting with read this hashtag GameCat name and hashtag viewer takeover begins. Well, we should have put that one as the last one in our list. It's That's got to be hot been true. It's it would have been true. Hotcakes, absolutely. Yeah. It's an instructional video on how to on how to schedule viewer takeover. We, I yeah, love it. Read this I, name <laughs> and it begins. I didn't if you say uh, it three times. He appears in your living room. We've also got is, David is that Tortilla. Bo that Bloody Mary or Candyman? Both, actually. It's both. Okay. Sorry, I, I totally ran We talked over that one. It was David Tortilla, the Game Cat. My Great bad. name. I'm a David. I love, I love all Davids. Unless you're a dick. He's very biased. Wow. But oh, you're not a dick. David, David Tortilla's been around guy. forever, man. It's so nice to see like these long-time uh, viewers slash uh, whatever, right? I, I want to say long-time GameCats uh, finally yeah. take the plunge and, and actually make it official. Right, it's like put it's like putting a ring on it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like they finally drank the Kool Aid, you know. So is that the right hands? <laughs> I don't remember which. We've also got <laughs> Cooter Critters. Cooter Critters. This is the one of my favorites. Cat. This is one of my favorites in recent memory. Cooter Critters. Someone explain Cooter Critters. Explain uh, yourself. What is a Cooter Critter? I, I need it in the comments below. It. We've also got <sighs> Spliffy, the smoking game cat. <clears throat> Have you ever meowed uh, on weed? <laughs> you ever seen uh, Joe Rogan podcast, bro? <laughs> and finally, we've got David, the English game cat. Who, might I say, is not only a great guy, but he's a, a great musician as well. He shared me some of his music uh, in the Discord because I requested it uh, very kindly. And he, uh, he, he shared it with me. And Yeah, dude's got some pipes, man. He's, he awesome. sounds pretty awesome. He's got that rock and roll soul. All right. But what we really do here on Viewer Takeover is we scour the comments, we scour the Discord, we look for the hashtag Viewer Takeover, and we find all of the Viewer Takeover questions and or comments we could find, we compile them, and if you're really unlucky, we answer your question. Yeah. Uh, first question comes to us from Billy Paw the Game Cat on PSVR this week, says, I'm sure you guys probably answer this question every year around this time, but what are your favorite PSVR horror games? With the Spookies DLC getting delayed, I really need something new and scary to add to my collection and start October off with a bang. Hashtag viewer takeover. I want to say first off the bat, Brian, I think, would be satisfied if we answered this question not only every year, but every particular viewer takeover <laughs> that we ever did, like as the first question. Yeah, it's true. Um, because obviously we all love horror games, but Brian is the huge buff in the Definitely room. Definitely so next sure level. He'll You'll have some good ones here. But for me, uh, transference is what pops into mind. It's one that people don't talk about as much. It doesn't always make the top 20, top 25 list. And it's more like unsettling psychological horror, kind of like it, it's creepy. And the way that the world shifts around you is just always unsettling. But there's not like big jump scares and stuff, though there are a few. Um, but if you're into that sort of stuff, if that sounds interesting to you, um, it's really well done. Like style is off the charts looks really good in the headset and uh there's some cool puzzles in there too actually so it's probably yeah. it's specter vision which is elijah wood's studio and it uh it also yeah. has a, a free demo called the walter test case uh demo uh that you should definitely check out as well it's free and well it's... and the cool thing about the demo is it's a separate experience so like even if you bought the game demos a whole new thing yeah sorry you were gonna say that brian weren't you yeah but you said it for me <laughs> <Okay>. one <laughs> last thing for me to have to say all right uh, Man, I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, you guys know that my answer for everything viewer takeover is Resident Evil Seven, but I'm gonna put a twist yeah. on it this time. Uh, if you have only played Resident Evil Seven proper, then it is time to take the plunge and download all of the band footage DLC. Uh, sometimes sometimes when the game goes on sale, the gold edition it's twenty dollars and it's actually cheaper just to get that than the individual pieces of DLC separately. Uh, man, and so, some of the games in the DLC are ridiculous. Some, some of them expand on the full story, the kind, kind of the campaign. Uh, some of them, uh, one of them is a card game, 21, where it's, it's blackjack-ish, but they keep throwing different rules at you, and, and then you start losing appendages. It's amazing. 
Um, and then my favorite one, uh, crap, I forget what it's called. Maybe you guys can help me out. Nightmare, is, nightmare mode. Thank you. I nightmare. love nightmare mode. Yeah. Nightmare so is good. when you're trapped in the basement and Jack is coming after you and uh, uh, molded are coming after you. And you have to basically uh, keep, keep these machines running to generate scrap. And with the scrap, you are crafting new weapons, you're crafting uh, health, you're crafting all of these things, and it's just you're running around like crazy uh, trying to survive the night. And it's almost Five Nights at Freddy style where every hour you get a slight break, and then it's back to it. Let's do it. So check that out, man. It's really good stuff. It sounds like an amount of content, too. Like that mode itself, you could play for hours and hours. It's There's so, so much good. to unlock. There's a ton of like really cool weapons you can get, but you actually have to play it a decent amount to get that stuff. Yeah. Um, so I would actually say yeah, if Nightmare was its own game and they just sold it separately on the PlayStation Store, I would probably fight for it to make the top 25 somewhere, somewhere near the back yeah. end. But if I, it was like a 15 or $20 game, like I would say, yeah, yes, yeah. no brainer. And that's just one piece of the DLC. So <laughs> buy it. Right, there's so much. AJ? What you got? I have to go with this one, and that is going to be Five Nights at Freddy's VR. Help wanted. I absolutely love this game. It's super <laughs> polished. Um, and, and man, I, I love all the mini games in it. But, but if you get it, you have to get the Curse of Dreadbear DLC uh, because it's so Halloween-themed. Of all these games, this is one that actually has, like, candy and and like actual halloween things um you know there's a mini game where you go trick-or-treating and stuff and I, I just i love it all man and it's it's just such a fun game to me and um you know we're, mileage may vary but uh if, if you find it scary or not but i found it to be absolutely terrifying and yeah. just really brilliant game design yeah, it's so terrifying. I mean, it, it's actually i feel like it's more terrifying than most scary games because you are not allowed to move around i mean I'm sorry. Let's rephrase that. Some of the, a lot of the DLC mini games and stuff do allow you to move around. It's part of the game, but the Five Nights core experience has you kind of trapped there behind the desk, the security desk, and not being able to get up and run away if you need to. I, I mean, that makes it extra scary to me. Do you guys, do we have any, uh, do we have any less, uh, kind of less mainstream suggestions? Um, so I also wrote down Home Sweet Home which is a great survival horror based on Thai horror, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is really cool. So people into Thai horror, uh, the persistence, which is a roguelike oh, yeah. sci-fi, like system shock kind of deal. Um, of course, uh, spookies, which is going to be getting the DLC, uh, later this month entitled the dollhouse also getting DLC. Most likely this month is affected the manor, mm -hmm. uh, going to get the gauntlet. And then finally, of course, how could I not mention the game that, really scares me more than probably anything and that is dread halls which is part of the game hero arcade it's 15 bucks uh there's a lot of mini games on it but pay the 15 dollars just for dread halls alone you won't be unsatisfied disappointed, disappointed. thank <laughs> yeah. you i can't yeah. i couldn't remember the word for some reason you know it's funny i just it came to me that i had some snippet of a dream the other night where i had installed dread halls by itself on my on my ps4 and it was sitting there as its own icon wouldn't that be grand if you didn't even have to fuck with Hero Cade? Because that's yeah. such a solid game, man. Yeah, they yeah. should they should I give you an one. ability to circumvent the entire main yeah, menu. I don't need all that stuff. Just yeah. drop me into Dread Halls. Although you wouldn't be getting the the main menu with the whale uh, with the island on. Its oh back yeah, that's floating true. around. Yeah. Um, I do want to give a shout out to uh, to Paranormal Activity. I think that game is like very very polished. I think it looks amazing it's a fairly small environment but I, I you know i mean as far as photorealism goes uh it's it's pretty damn close man I, I know we use that term maybe a little too loosely sometimes uh but i think you get in there and you're like holy crap like this is really convincing this is a really convincing house um and and and, and i just love like the sort of i never know what i'm supposed to do next but always sort of stumble into where i'm supposed to be and there's some really terrifying moments i do need to add one thing because if i don't nick milo is going to kill me Home Sweet Home, near the end, has like this really strange bug where you literally, it crashes every single time when you're sawing through that metal thing in the door. Um, you actually have to go into non-VR mode and play through that part. Uh, and then you can drop back into VR for the end of it. And the entire end of that game is kind of crappy. But everything leading up to it is so good that I also recommend it. Yeah, the final thing I got to say here is we have a, Brian's got a top 10 uh, PSVR horror games list. Uh, where he ties me up in oh, yeah. duct tape and stuff. Make sure you go check that one out. I forgot about that. That was fun. 
All right, we should do that again. Also, real quick, if you guys don't have dreams yet and you're interested in spooky stuff, a ton of people have already made uh, like horror themed stuff. But I have to imagine with October coming up, there's going to be a bunch more either getting you know created for the first time or people who made one last year and kind of forgot about it and they're like oh i can give it vr this year or something like that you know to kind of celebrate so if you are doing an event a halloween event yeah i figured there'd be a lot of creations around that because it's you know it's fun people do that i'm sure at christmas we'll see winter wonderland themed stuff you know but um i mean especially if you already have it yeah take a look well rec room is always great for for halloween rooms yeah yeah david who's our next question from uh, mysteriously enough, a person just named V on the Discord. Who could that be? Spooky stuff. Uh, he says, hashtag viewer takeover. With the PS5 launch coming next month and many of us upgrading from a base PS4, what games improve drastically with the PS4 Pro so that we may play it again on the PS5? Uh, I think Brown and I kind of have the same initial answer for this one, um, which is Monsters of the Deep, right? <laughs> Pretty Monster, much. Monsters of the Deep is like scary bad on the OG. It's so it's got that FOV, that foveated rendering where it's just like you can see a circle of clarity and then everything else is blur. Yeah. Um, and it's really, really noticeable. But then on Pro, it actually is a pretty good looking game. Like it's it's really not bad. Um, I just wish it was a better game. Yeah, that's the only one that pops out to me is like a huge difference, like a major game changer type difference well then i'm going to be generic and talk about resident evil 7 because because okay. resident evil 7 also has it's a beautiful game period no matter how you're playing it but you will notice on the og uh that the foveated rendering makes everything outside of your focus super super pixelated and then mm-hmm. when you finally get to play it on the pro or ps5 um and this is this is so good man this is so great i you know sometimes we forget uh you know with vr i really think that you want the you know the most powerful system pushing your games and so it, it's sort of hard to remember sometimes that a lot of cats out there haven't upgraded to PlayStation 4 Pro. I'm like, the, the second I realized it was going to make my VR games look better, I was like, of course I'm going to buy that. Like, I have no use for a 4K TV or anything like that. I don't need my, I don't need flat games ever again. <laughs> but but when I found out that it's going to make my PSVR games look better, I was like, yes, yes. And man, Resident Evil 7 gets rid of that foveated rendering. Everything just looks a little bit better, runs a little bit better. It's still got issues. But it's, it's, it makes a great game look fantastic. Well, Brian, I, I appreciate you staying true to yourself. But I got to be honest with you. I played Resident Evil 7 for the first time on the OG, and it still looked really good. It so does. 100%. I don't know about a huge difference. But uh, I do have a list, a few actually, here. Number one, you just mentioned Dreams. Dreams, I hear so many times people saying that. I, yeah. I don't think you were having the same experience as you guys because you're on a pro, and mm-hmm. it doesn't look as good on an OG. Um, so yeah. I know that's going to be one. Zing the Land Beyond. I remember talking to Darwin's mm-hmm. eyeball who said he had an OG and he said it did not look good on an OG. And this is like probably my favorite puzzle game of all time. You guys know it's how much so I love puzzle pretty. games. It's um, a really pretty game on Pro. It is gorgeous uh, on, on Pro. Stunning uh, even. Um, Skyrim looks absolutely amazing yes. with the Pro yeah. patch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, I, I played the hell out of it. Uh, flat screen. And once I uh, did it in VR on the Pro after that second patch, oh my God, so good. Um, Squadrons, which just came out, uh, I've heard is not as good looking on an OG that it is a Pro. Yeah. And finally, Blood and Truth, That's which I've heard. the one I was waiting for. Yeah, uh, I've heard uh, Blood and Truth does not look that great on an OG, but it looks really good on a Pro. It looks fantastic on the Pro. That's another one that's night and day. Um, I, I, there's a couple other ones that didn't, immediately uh one of the, the a couple of the first ones that i played when i got my pro uh was actually farpoint uh and farpoint i was like i kept thinking to myself i was like this doesn't look that much better than i switched back to the og and i was like oh wait sometimes it's just things pop and you feel that sense of immersion a little bit more and that sense of distance a little bit more and i think farpoint is one of those that the 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 enemies uh feel like they pop from the environment a little bit more uh so it feels less like a video game and more like reality and it just has that definition uh, enhancement all around. I'm just using random box quotes and shit, <laughs> shoving them all I... together. Um, and one that is totally irrelevant now is Starboard Arena. Starboard Arena looks so good on the Pro, and I really think it gives that sense of depth like way, way, way better um, on, a, on a Pro than it does on the OG. Unfortunately, that game is, yeah, poor one out. We have to say did instead of does. Yeah, um, so sad. The, the truth is, 
almost every game since switching to a pro, every game has uh, many, many games has some kind of slight enhancement from it. So the, the if you play a lot of games, you're going to benefit greatly from from uh, going from the to the PS5. Um, because yeah, you'll definitely notice it gets rid of all that little. The only thing that really bothered me in the OG was like a little bit of screen tearing um, stuff. But you're but there's some games where you'll get like higher frames per second. Uh, you'll get like that crisp, nice crisp like edges and stuff on different games, um, where you just gets rid of a lot of that blur. So overall, anyone going from the OG to the PS5 is in for a nice treat. Yeah, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm excited to see what you know what kind of differences we get from the Pro to the PS5. I mean, forget about that huge generational leap uh, from the OG to PS5. Uh, and then the final question comes to us from who, AJ? Comes from General Obi Rai Katnobi. Love that name, Rai. Absolutely crushed it. Mm-hmm. it. Says hashtag viewer takeover. Now that Squadrons has dropped to your near critical acclaim, uh, do you think this was for EA to test the VR market? It's great to see a AAA studio make an original kind of game. Uh, I mean, we we have seen Skyrim and and Borderlands from a huge dev, but nothing they are uh, just older titles put into VR. Got it. Uh, do you think this could be the turning point to see the huge companies start to make some crazy good experiences as well? I mean, yes and no. I think I think PlayStation Five is going to be the turning point. When again, we, I, I feel like I've said this a thousand times over the last two years, where you know, being able to flip that switch, being able to just be like, "Hey, let's see what this game looks like in VR. Can the PlayStation Five handle it? Does it have the horsepower to render two images at the same time? Are we going to have a significant downgrade?" Um, you know, again, I think this is this is one hundred percent the way going forward that we're going to get more VR players and that more AAA developers are going to make VR games by saying we've made this awesome game for flat screen gamers and it's also good at vr mode so yeah i think this is one of the first but i think playstation 5 is going to make that easy much easier on a lot more developers we said we had a similar question earlier this year about our triple a devs starting to get in uh, get into vr and you know we said kind of a similar thing kind of um back then but i'm a full believer now that this is the beginning squadrons dreams a um, couple other games that came out recently I believe that all of these together, this whole uh, second half of 2020 has been the beginning of where like real AAA companies are, are really starting to, to, you know, dabble and, and, and not even just dabble, but create full games. I mean, Squadrons is huge. Um, it is like it is like the equivalent of Star, uh, of Call of Duty in um, in TIE Fighters and X-Wings to me. And, you know, it's I skipped the campaign and I went directly to the multiplayer and and like, did. yeah. Yeah, like, and I did that a lot with uh, Call of Duty as well. And then once you get kind of tired and need a break from it, you go back and you have a, a full campaign to do. So I think the beginning has already started, but I still uh, agree with you, Brian, that PS5 is likely going to get even better with the kicking, and it's going to start with things like Hitman VR and then go from there. Yeah, I think um, not so much as like testing the waters or like a turning point for. The way that I think EA sees this game is like VR was kind of an easy win. It's kind of a no-brainer because it's a cock-based game. Cockpit-based game, sorry. Cock-based game? You know what I mean. (laughs) Brian, you can edit that in again, right? Just keep putting cock-based in. Sorry. Um, (laughs) What was I saying? Okay. um, So I think actually, instead of like this being a turning point or being uh, testing the waters kind of thing, it's more like an easy win for EA. Because if you have a cockpit based game, first of all, VR motion sickness issues go right out the window. And, um, you know, you also don't have to render as much of the environment as you would in a normal game. Like if I'm playing a first person game like Borderlands, for instance, there is no built in blinder to help the you know, the the system process things a little easier because when I'm in a TIE fighter, all I'm seeing is this little window in front of me at any time. So the game doesn't really have to render all this except for like some cool lighting effects. Um, And I think it just made sense to make this one VR um, for them probably and wasn't a huge investment on top of the original development of the game, Um, especially since they had the experience with the Battlefront mission. 
I don't know if it's the same team exactly. I think that might have been Dice and this is Motive. I think it was Criterion but, um, that made the uh, VR part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I feel like they probably had some a little bit of knowledge, familiarity with it. So, um, I, But I don't think I see it as EA like staking their claim on VR or anything like that. I don't think we're going to see other big EA titles like NBA 2K or something like that. Is that still an EA game? I don't know. Those big games that they make probably won't be in VR anytime soon. This one just kind of lined up just the right way so that it worked out, I think. Probably. That's, that's what I think. I do think <clears throat> I think we are going to start seeing more, not necessarily other EA games, but I think we're going to start seeing more and more uh, AAA developers, maybe Rockstar is next. Ooh, well, they did say they were working on something, so. Yeah, I'm still betting on uh, Grand Theft Auto V VR. I, I don't see them making a making six anytime soon. I think they, five selling way too well, and it's just like Minecraft. Once you've done everything you can possibly do and sell and sold it to every single consumer you can possibly sell it to, who's left? Oh, the VR market. Oh, but this thing's fucking old as hell. Let's port it into VR now and sell it to a few more million people. Uh, and I really think that's what we're going to see. I I really think we're going to see that fairly early on, whether it be in the PlayStation early on in PS5's lifespan or early on in the PSVR 2 lifespan. Um, but again still waiting for sony to well, reveal some details about that that could also be a big part of why they made that huge deal of like oh if you buy a ps5 you get this game mm-hmm. right don't you just get gta 5 for free if you buy a ps5 like early enough or like at launch online. or something like that yeah gta online oh gta online sorry okay well even that but that just though, means they're like, in bed together man which is perfect that's great but i'm i'm just saying like at that moment if they did say at some point oh yeah and it's got vr support then they'd immediately have like the most installed VR game ever. Like mm-hmm. Grand Theft Auto, people would buy that up like hotcakes, and they wouldn't even need to. It might be free. So, yeah. Oh no! Just make sure it has move support. You said buy it up like hotcakes. I feel like hotcakes is going to use that to change his name next week. <laughs> All right, you guys. I think that's going to do it for another episode of Viewer Takeover. Thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, and make sure you subscribe to Dave over at Dave Station VR, and subscribe to AJ over at The Underground. Uh, also, make sure you hit us up on Patreon.com/slash Without Parole. Games. Uh, make sure you also, I know we didn't really pimp the Discord like we should have. That's my fault. I apologize. So click the link in the description to join our Discord. It's free. We hang out there 24-7. That's where this conversation happens 24-7. And it's repeating myself. Uh, make sure you change your name to GameCat. Hashtag GameCat in the comments below. We had to search some of you guys out. All right? You didn't put hashtag GameCat, but we found you anyway. Don't make me go hunting. Just do it. Make my life easier. We love you so very much. That's it for another episode of Viewer Takeover. Uh, That's Dave. That's AJ. My name's Brian, and we're out. Fucking roll. Let's go. All right. We'll finish it 45 past uh, at the latest. Wishful thinking. But yeah, let's do it. All right. This is Viewer Takeover. We film every Monday night and bring it to YouTube every Tuesday. Uh, hopefully Tuesday. There's a lot of stuff going on. Oh, yeah, I think... Sirens on your end? Oh, don't tell me it was already Sirens. Yep. Well, yep. Let's, let's just start over again. God damn it. <laughs> it's like they know. There's a sign outside my door that says, and now. <laughs>